Uh, welcome class, uh, thanks for joining us again. I'm going to go through a short tutorial on how to get our current Wi-Fi Linksys E2000 router and our wireless, um, I believe it is a wireless and USB uh, Aspers, oh sorry that's in Spanish. <laughs> it's a wireless and USB adapter. So it says a capable speed of 300 megabits on this particular one, but this one is an external ultra wireless in router. We want to go ahead and set that up in Windows 7. I'm going to go ahead and go through that. So the first things first, you want to power on the Cisco router. And what we want to do is we want to go ahead and reset it. So we want to reset it back to the normal, to the default factory settings. And to do that, I'm going to go ahead and press the reset button on the router itself by holding down the reset button and waiting until I can see that the router is going to reboot. Um, I'm going to count up to 10, 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, 1006, 1007, 1008, 1009, 1010. Um, and it looks like I've reset the router itself. It's starting back up. Kind of going through the process here. Let's go ahead and take a look and see if I've logged into the router. Go down and click on start. Type in CMD and I'm going to type in IP seal in FIG and I want to release whatever IP address is currently on the computer so I'm going to type in IP seal in FIG release hit enter on it and I did release my network adapter let's go ahead and let's renew it whoops sorry IP seal in FIG forward slash renew And it looks like we grabbed an IP address of 192.168.1.34. So for in the lab, what we need to do is we need to change the default IP address scheme on this, okay? So currently what I did is I, I'm sitting here at one of the Dell computers, our Optiplex 780. And what I've done is I've plugged the network cable that goes into the computer into the WAN port of the router. Then from the LAN portion of the router, which is the switches, which are labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, is plugged directly into the computer. So I'm actually using the network connection as the internet, and I'm going to share the internet or the wireless with that particular connection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to manually configure it. So right now by looking at the following screen, you're going to see that IP address 192.168.1.1 is the default gateway which happens to also be our router so let's go ahead and put that in 192.168.1.1 this is our router let's wait for the login screen looks like it came right up and by default this uh, Cisco Linksys E2000 router you don't have a username by default but you do have a password in it and it's I believe it's admin and you want to put it in the password schema let's click OK on it Wait for it to come up. Looks like it. Yep, it looks like it logged in. No problem. And we don't. We can discard this message. It's a web using utility. They're asking me to basically use the CD that came with it. It's unnecessary at this point. So our main objectives here. Let's get this changed over. So you notice that also my IP address that's coming into the computer, which is also happens to be by clicking on status, you can bring it up. And let's go ahead and let's try to get it to log in. Is what it's going to do is. See if we can get a status. Let me look up a web page here real quick. See if we can get it to change the status of that. Click on programs, Internet Explorer. Trying to get it to grab an IP address. <clears throat> that one didn't work. Google.com. Whoops. Now, if this web page doesn't come up, this is the problem with setting up this router. What happens is the fact that you're using the IP address that's coming in to it on the WAN port is the same subnet. Well, the router set up to do network address translation, or it's called NAT, so it doesn't function properly. So what what we need to do to get it to work correctly first, okay, is you need to change that subnet. So let's go back to setup. And then once you're on the setup page, you want to change this IP address from something other than what its default is. So to do that, to make it really simple, 
you could just change this to a zero. Or if you wanted to make it just so that it's a clear enough change that you know exactly what's going on here, I'm going to change mine to say a class B network. I'm going to put 128, and then I'm going to put in 101. It's regardless of what numbers you guys pick, 101. That's just the way that I want to set my particular one up. The subnet mask is not going to be 255. Oh, that, that is correct. It's going to readjust when you save it, and I'm going to prove that by when we log back in as well. So the DHCP server can no longer be that as well, especially if I just change the IP address. So once we save this, you're going to see that this IP address right here is going to change. Okay, So let's go ahead and save it regardless of what you see here. But as long as you're changing the IP address to something different, once it saves it, it's going to readjust the DHCP server. So let's click on Save Changes. And what it's doing, obviously, is it's rebooting right now, configuring your changes have been set you will be returned to the previous page after a few seconds and if you notice up here the IP address is wrong so we know definitely that it's not going to be that so let's go ahead and check find out what it's supposed to be so let's click on start go to run uh, it's trying to log in back to the old IP address which with the new one let's oh look it did it did readjust. If you can see it right here, it added it in there. So let's go ahead and go to the web page again. So that particular IP address is 128.101.101.1. So let's hit enter on it. It looks like it gave me the prompt screen. So let's go to admin on the password again. Let's log into it. And if you notice down here on the bottom, it changed the DHCP scope. So the first IP address that's going to be on it is 128.101.101.100. So we probably are going to be, I would say, dot one oh one. So let's take a look at that. IP C O N F I G forward slash all. And let's oop, I don't think whoops, sorry, I don't want to do all. Let's just do the IP config by itself. And you'll look up and you notice, oh, I grabbed the IP address of 117. No big deal. The thing is, is just so that you understand, here is my IP address here. Now watch, if I go to try to get on the internet, let's open up a separate web, br web browser, go to Internet Explorer, and it's asking me to tell me to insert the CD. However, we've manually configured it, so I want to click continue. And yes, I understand the risks about setting it up, and then continue, and I should be able to go to the web, and I did. So now, my IP address is different from what the router, what the default router is, and before, I couldn't get on the web because it wouldn't function correctly. It just doesn't know how to translate the same IP address on the WAN and the same IP from the same IP address on the LAN. So let me explain what that what that means. So let's let me put this in. This is 128. There it is right there. So it's 128.101.101.1. That's the router. So let's log into it again. And it's still logged in from the previous time. So let's take a look at the status now on the router. If you look on the status of the router here, okay, this is an indication to tell you how this is working. You see that the domain where this router is actually logging into is gateway.2wire.net. And this wasn't working before, if you noticed. And look at this. The WAN side of the router, meaning the input of the internet connection, is coming in on 192.168.1.120. Okay, that's what it's logging into on the WAN side. But if we come back and go to this setup, and we take a look here, look at what this is logged into. We have changed the LAN side of it. Okay, the LAN side of the output. Now this one's not labeling it LAN, but it is the LAN. It's referred to as the LAN. If you can look down here, it's actually accepting the IP address manually. I'm sorry, uh, automatically. Right here it is. 128.2.101.101.1. And subnet mask. There's no subnet mask on this particular one, but here's the router. This router is a Cisco. Note this description that's in here. This is a Cisco H3199. Okay, go back to the command prompt. So I'm going to go to start CMD and I'm going to type in IP seal in FIG. All right, if you notice, my IP address of this particular computer right here is. 128.101.101.17. So I have my router set up. So now the thing that I need to set up is since we've got it all connected here internally on the network, I need to hook up my wireless router. So I'm just going to confirm that I have a good internet connection on here. Open up a second window, go to start, Internet Explorer, 
And look, I can go to Google, I can go anywhere I want, okay? Now, let's set up the wireless portion of the router, all right? Let's click on wireless, and let's go ahead and click on manual setup, which is good. And I want to, it looks like everything is pretty much in there. Set it up, looks like it's on, uh, what was the router that I told you guys about? The one that we have here in class is a wireless and USB adapter. So is there any point in turning it on B or G? There really isn't. So what you should do, since we're only using N, set it up to N only. No point in, in opening up the other parts of the network if there isn't a need for it. So if you're using N cards, let's set it up to only use a wireless N card. All right. Let's go ahead and let's see the protected setup. Let's see, wireless security. There's what I wanted to see here. Okay, so we're, we're accepting that. That's okay. I believe what we have to click and save changes on this. All right, looks like my changes have been set. Let's go ahead and go back into the router. Let's go to wireless security. And let's turn on the security mode. And let's use WPA2, which we covered in class. WPA2 personal. And the paraphrase. So we can give this a name. I'm going to call this CST lab. Oh, actually, here. Back when we were talking about how you make things different, what I put up on the board was PU pup. Let's do percent and then CST. That will be our password. Let's see if it'll accept that paraphrase. Let's go ahead and click save. Now remember, P, capital P, lowercase u, PP, percent CST. Let's okay it. All right, that looks like we've got that wireless set up. Looks like our wireless is on. Let's go ahead and let me pause this and I will come back here so we can run that. Looks like I have a couple of these open. Okay. I'm going to pause it. All right, we're back. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in right now. Let's see if it detects anything once it turns on. It looks like it says it's trying to install a driver. Okay, I just want to show you guys that I have no internet connection right at the moment. Let me click on start and then type in CMD and let's do IPCONFIG. Let's see, I had a current IP address. Nope, it says media is disconnected. Media disconnected throughout the entire scope. So that means that we have no internet connection. So let's go down here. Looks like I came up with an internet connection. Looks like it automatically configured it. Oh, look at that right here, class. You can see that this has a Cisco H3199. And remember, if once we were in the router before, that's what came up. So let's double click on that connection. And you remember what our password was it was capital P U P P percent C S T. That's the, that's the actual password that it was before, so let's go and see if it'll accept it. Let's log into it. Looks to me like it accepted. If you notice down here on the bar, it looks like it says we have internet access. Just go ahead and try to get on the internet, see if it connects, and voila, we're connected wirelessly. Let's go back and take a look at that wireless network connector. Let's go down to start, type in CMD, hit enter, type in IPCONFIG. And let's see, looks like I have the gateway there. Let's see if I can find the IP address of the wireless router. Ah, look, there we go, right there. Here's the name of it. Wireless LAN, uh, wireless adapter. <laughs> I can't believe I can't say this correctly. Wireless LAN adapter, wireless network connection. You can see where my DNS is. Looks like it, it says it's added an IPv6 address, which is in here, but we're using IPv. And take a look at that. We have the 128.101. Dot 101 dot 118 when I was on the network cable itself it was dot 117 so we have now configured the wireless adapter when I get on the internet it comes right up let's close by looking at the router itself let's see if we can look at it sometimes you have to enable the router to do remote administration like this sometimes it's blocked so let's take a look it's 128.101.101.1. Let's see if it'll let me in. It looks like it's giving me the password to log in. Let's try it. 
Admin is the password. I'm now logging into the wireless portion of the router. And let's check on the status. And it looks, here's my WAN connection, which says internet. Internet connection, WAN, wide area network, which is my internet connection. Let's drag down here. And it says that it's connected. Looks like we're using the router here at the college. And let's take a look, and we can see our router on the wireless. Let's pick the wireless side. And let's see if I can see it in any advanced settings. Let's take a look at this. Let's see some things that we could change in here. However, let's see wireless MAC filter not implemented so they're not we're not actually blocking MAC addresses and everybody know what a MAC address is when you go to start run CMD and you want to type in IPCONFIG switch all a MAC address what is that a MAC address is the machine name address so let's pull it down here let's take a look what is the MAC address of the wireless card? Let's see if we can find it here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and clear this out again. See if we can do it in a simple form. I just type it in IP config. And it looks like, oh, I can see the MAC address. Look at that. It says it right here. This is the MAC address of this particular air network card, the USB. See it here? Generally, this is a manufacturer's name, but the rest of this portion here is the actual MAC address itself. Uh, let's see, do I see anything? Tunnel adapter? Nope, that, that would have to be it, because this is the IP address for the wireless card. All right, all right, thank you guys for joining me. That's a tutorial on doing that. Um, come here in the class and actually try this out and get it working yourself. Well, we're going to actually do some labs on doing it in Windows XP as well. Yeah, and we'll continue on at that point, but... Thank you again for joining me. Bye-bye now.